Uh, not only Buckeye, all-time great Big Ten football player, he is now joining us live. So I think Ohio State keeps it close, James. I think their defensive line is going to mostly overwhelm Clemson's fairly average pedestrian O-line. That's what I see. And whatever you see, people are going to say, well, he's a Buckeye. But when you look at film, when I watch a Clemson, I don't think this is one of the more talented teams, although I think Trevor's just off the chain. But what do you, what does the film say about that O-line, D-line, Buckeye-Clemson matchup? Yeah, Colin, I think what's hard for me is the fact that both of these teams I don't think are as good as the matchup a year ago. I think both teams were better a year ago. What concerns me for Ohio State is that that defensive line all year They've been kind of doing it by committee, and and Larry Johnson's a phenomenal defensive line coach. He's been he's been great all year for them. But I just think when you look at that D line, they don't have Chase Young. How does this defense stop Clemson? I know their O line isn't what it was at Clemson, but you're losing guys like Damon Arnett, who's starting in the NFL, Jeffrey Okuda, who's starting in the NFL, Chase Young, who's making a great impact in the NFL. All three of those guys aren't on this defense for Ohio State. That's what concerns me. Uh, from the Ohio State perspective. You know, it's interesting. Um, Last time they played, Ohio State played great early, had a call not go their way. It sort of unraveled. But if you go back to that game, when it was over, I didn't hear every comment from, you know, the Ohio State side. But there there was a lot of people I knew that were Buckeyes that said, we're a better team than they are. We, we absolutely believe they are. Do you believe in Buckeye land today, the, the feeling is similar that personnel-wise, we're a better team? Or do we know who Ohio State is? Yeah, I don't think we do know. I think there's a lot of anxiety uh, about this. This kind of feels almost like back when I was playing – and we were in 2006, we get beat by Florida. Then in 07, you play LSU and you lose again. And then it's this whole thing, Ohio State can't beat the SEC. There's this feeling of, gosh, Clemson again. And if you don't win this year, there's kind of that feeling of, yeah, we've had great seasons. We've had great teams, but Clemson, we can't beat Clemson. And there is this giant monkey on their back about this team. So the, the team needs to be careful. You can almost overfocus, get paralysis by analysis. You can kind of overdo it. Only playing six games, Colin, I don't know how to really judge this team. If it was the last six games of the season and they were able to ramp up and kind of build toward this moment, maybe you feel a little better about it. But the stopping and starting, there's no rhythm, and they're behind on a lot of game situations and on a lot of reps. Yeah. You know, um, I think Notre Dame's going to be a little outclassed by Alabama, but I do think there is a potential that Alabama is looking ahead to Clemson or an Ohio State. I think Clemson may be looking ahead to Alabama. That's why I think Ohio State uglies it up and keeps it close. What would Notre Dame have to do? To, there are three touchdown underdog. What would they have to do, James, to you? You could tell early in the game, oh, this is working for Notre Dame. Well, they're going to have to take the football away. you got to find ways to get more possessions for your offense. That defense has to play a certain way. And then I think Ian Book has to be able to scramble and use his legs. Whenever you look at Nick Saban's defenses over the years, they, they have struggled with mobile quarterbacks, yep. quarterbacks that can beat you with their legs and kind of make stuff happen. That's how Ian Book, the first game against Clemson, was able to attack them and beat them. The second game, Clemson kept him bottled in the pocket. He was not nearly as effective. The one thing about Alabama, though, and you know this from covering them, they do not overlook anybody. Yeah. Alabama, is that's been the most impressive team. All these other schools, these big-time schools around the country, they overlook teams. They get upset. Alabama just acts accordingly. They go out there, they handle business, and I actually think, at least maybe it's my part of the country being here in Ohio, that there's not enough respect for what the Crimson Tide have done this season and how impressive they've been. You know, it, it, it's interesting. Justin Fields, uh, Trevor Lawrence looks like he's next level. I saw him in high school, live in San Diego to camp, and he just looks different. He's just bigger, the whip. It just everything's just it's kind of natural and very fluid. Justin Fields is interesting. I've seen him play three times this year, three or four, and a couple of them he has struggled with accuracy. He looks a little lost. Again, I try to think it's COVID. You're not practicing as much. I don't know what to take from it. When you watch him, what do you like? What concerns you about him? Well, you're right. He started the season on fire. His completion percentage was through the roof. He was really playing impressive. And then it was the stop and starting again. And I think he fought so hard, Colin. If you remember, he's on Good Morning America trying to you know, fight for the Big Ten season to come back. He's doing all these interviews. He wanted a chance to come out and play, specifically to get a rematch against Clemson, a chance to get that last throwback where the miscommunication with him and Chris Olave happened in that game. 
But this year, whenever they've stopped and they've come back, the game against Indiana, he made some really uncharacteristic mistakes, forcing the ball when he's going down, just throwing it up in the air. He did the same thing against Northwestern. I just think whenever he came back from a pause, it was a, hold on, let me reintroduce myself to America and kind of force the issue. He's got to be very careful not to do that uh, against Clemson tomorrow night because all eyes will be on those two. They're both from Georgia, not too far away from one another. They're forever going to be linked. They've been linked through college. They'll be linked through the NFL. I think he had a really good start to the season, but he started to press as things kind of canceled and, and got out of rhythm. I believe, and I've been told, we will go to an eight-team playoff, largely ignited, James, because of COVID and the budget shortfalls for even the schools like Texas and Ohio State. You can't just keep writing $10 million checks to do all this testing, and COVID's a part of our life here for at least the next six months and foreseeable future. I said this morning, there's eight programs, I think. We think more teams will be more fairness. I think there's going to be eight teams that are going to dominate it. And I put the eight teams up in the order in which I think they will dominate it. Clemson doesn't lose assistance, and they have a weak conference. Bama's great, but does lose assistance. Ohio State's just a notch below. Uh, Oklahoma dominates their conference like the ACC. I, I just don't see a lot of roadblocks unless Texas gets their act together. Georgia's a recruiting power. So is Notre Dame, and I love Brian Kelly. Oregon dominates Denver West recruiting. They're really cleaning up in California. And I put Florida in there because they don't have to. Texas A&M would have to play Alabama. Florida just has to beat Georgia. So those are my eight. But it's interesting. Part of the eight is I think those coaches, none are leaving. Most have long-term contracts. Ryan Day is interesting. I've heard NFL stuff with Ryan Day. And you you can't keep hitting home runs. Trestle, Urban, Ryan Day. At some point, you hire the wrong guy. Do you believe Ryan Day is the Buckeye coach three, four, five years from now? I think three three or four years he is. You start going out to five, and you have to wonder, what what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? The difference in lifestyle between college and pro coach, at least in the NFL, you have some kind of break. In college, you are always recruiting. That, That never ends. And uh, you know, even with the early signing period now being mid-season, I mean, these guys were having their signing day during the Big Ten Championship Week, trying to do game planning. Yet you're also trying to make sure every single recruit feels good uh, on that day and makes it special for them. So it's tough. Do you want to keep living that lifestyle? Um, Ryan Day is a is a really smart uh, offensive play caller. I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunities for him. But yeah. I, I like your list. I agree with your list. I, what baffles me is that when, when I was playing just back in 05 to 08, Colin, we had Texas. You would have never thought Texas would fall off with their resources. And I think they were obviously hoping and wanted Urban. And when Urban said no, he would have been a guy that for sure could have turned that thing around. Yeah. And then USC was a, was dominant with Pete Carroll. So those the, having those two teams not in the top eight, I think, just explains how far those programs have fallen. Yeah, may not have the right coaches. Good stuff. James, nice having you on the show for the first time. Admired your career. I love what you do, and uh, you did a great job. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Anytime. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.